What are do players and trainers? It is your boy the Blazing Squid with week or should I say episode number three of the power rankings for LDL season eight. But as always, I am not alone. I am hosted by my co-host Spartan275. Greetings everyone, this is Spartan275. Hope you guys are having an excellent day as we go down into the power rankings of week three. Oof. Uh, what would you say about week three? Uh, there were some pretty interesting games. Uh, there were like two that I wasn't expecting. We had a newcomer uh, coming into the league uh, to cover uh, someone else's spot. And other than that, it was pretty uh, some pretty solid games. Agreed, agreed. Um, from really interesting stuff, we also do have the week one battle of Isaac and Shea that never happened, but now Apollo that did take over for Shea, so I think he's still the Lake Erie Gyarados, I'm not sure. I don't think that's been updated any chance, but we will also be including a little bit of that information since that will officially place them where they should respectively be. But with that said, let's jump into the power ranking and spot number 16. Unfortunately, this hurts to say, but we have the Winnipeg Jealous Sense. Oh my God. This battle, <laughs> I recorded this battle. This battle only took six minutes to record. Six minutes. It was a very short game. It was. 14 turn. Yeah, it's probably Steven's shortest game. Uh, what are your thoughts? Uh, There were a lot of questionable choices uh, from Matt's side on some uh, one thing uh, was using Final Gambit as like immediately. I, I wouldn't say that would have been the best play, but and then uh, later on, where uh, he lost Crocodile, probably was Scarf, and that also lost, made him lose momentum. Ever since uh, since then, he started to lose momentum. He he lost his Cafable to Gunshot uh, Dawn Fan. Even though he tried to recover it, it was doing more damage than him trying to recover. So I would assume that he would have attacked otherwise. So I don't know. Uh, and then there was this turn where he went for agility uh, on on Pelipper, where it could easily click Skull and could have a chance to burn, which it did, which pretty much uh, weakened. Uh, Metagross uh, in the long run to prevent it and then he just end up getting swept uh, Yeah, agreed big time um, I felt like you know High risk big reward. That's what Matt was kind of going for there As you mentioned going for the final gambit turn one very very reckless, especially Mega scissor was out in front. Well, it hadn't mega yet, but a simple bullet punch would have neutralized that final gambit like big time um, mm -hmm. I would have gotten rid of the Dawn fan <laughs> as soon as possible. Uh, I know he was hoping for probably a miss, and that Dawn fan was not missing. Um, he was actually like he was slowly losing that battle too. Like his soft boils was not gaining enough back for him. I've, I don't know if you noticed that. Like it was slowly, surely. Oh, it was like, not. Yeah, I felt like the crit in the end was inevitable. Plus, like I think it was gonna just knock it out. So yeah, it just. Matt needed to play a little bit more offensive, I would say. It, it would have really helped him out. I, I did like the agility Metagross. I, I think that thing could have worked out to an extent. Uh, I'm not sure if it would have knocked out the the Kingdra, though, it, right away. I think it may have been um, a weakness policy set uh, based on how, if that he used uh, agility. Oh, okay, so... I see what you mean. Yeah, if that would have gone off then. He would have had a much better chance, but eh, it's close. It's close. But overall, yeah, same thing. I thought he was going to attack the Bulletproof. He didn't. It was very risky. He went for the... Plus, I, I'd rather than not take any water move from a Bulletproof in the rain. Especially like that. But other than that, like, Matt, I know you play so much better than this. And I hope... I know you'll bounce back. For sure, you'll bounce back, my dude. 
Hopefully you at least jump to spot number 15. And in the spot number 15, we have the Utah Valley Talon Flames and their coach, Jordan. I just watched this battle, did I not? It was Jordan versus, was it Brennan? It, Brennan, it yes. was Brennan. Wow, okay, wait. I know I had taken notes as well. So you can start off while I open up my notes. Uh, well, the fact that he lost Zapdos early against Primarina, which it may have been specs based on the damage it, it was doing on Zapdos, really costed him uh, probably his defogger um, getting out uh, outplayed by Leech C, Giga Drain, Tangela being 1v1 by his own girder uh, he did try to bring it back a little bit but it was too much to a point where Weavile was able to like easily come in just pick anything off and also losing Mega Glalie, uh, going for double edge, and especially uh, when he tried to go double edge when uh, Snorlax was on the f uh, was still in play, even though he should have assumed that it was probably thick fat, which I believe it was uh, based on the damage it it was able to absorb from. Uh, re refrigerate double edge so i think he didn't play as great as he should have but he did try to bring it back a little bit um yeah uh overall i think he had a very tough matchup this week we're, up with, we're talking about the ldl season seven champion you're up against um i actually have to fight jordan this uh, this coming friday and I think he's building right before we actually even battle. So it probably it's a lack of time in, in, in the building. Um, game decision wise, oh man, I just, I wrote notes all about Brennan. Um, it's just, I think it, there was a lack, a lack of research or a lack of decision making because um, Thick Fat Snorlax was an obvious bring for uh, Mega Glalie. So I think he could have probably played around that, try to get in his girder, knowing that Snorlax would come in. Just little things like that to kind of give you the edge, the competitive edge would have been super nice instead of attacking head on. But that's kind of Jordan's play style. He actually does like to play a lot head on. And unfortunately, it didn't work out too well against Brennan. With that said, let's move on with spot number 14 where we have the Albany. Obama Snows and their coach Ryan. Unfortunately, this game was actually a remake, so we don't have like I don't think any info. I don't think it was we, a code at all. No, we, I didn't was able to get any info. I wasn't even able to load up the video, so Yeah, I, and I, I, Isaac's playing on Moon, so he can't save games. I, I told him like finish your Ultra Moon, bro, so but unfortunately So we so just have a nice we won't be able to uh, leave any like comments about the battle. Yeah. So we apologize uh, to Ryan and to Isaac about that. Yeah. But moving on to spot number 13, where we have the Moon Valley Mewtwo's, who this week they actually faced a very, very difficult opponent. Yours truly, Spartan275. Yo, tell me, what, what were the thoughts in that uh, game, man? I, I really love your checks. I gotta compliment you on that. Your checks were okay. phenomenal that match. Um, it was the fact that uh, once Bulu uh, fell, it was once he lost Bulu, it really uh, hurt him in the long run. It prevented Halucha from being a problem. It prevented uh, Grassy Terrain to be annoying. And he, what he told me uh, after the battle is that he was uh, Scarf Bulu. And mm. in the battle, I, I was able to outspeed with my Nidoqueen, in which I was also a uh, choice Scarf as well. So I was one point faster than Jolly, 
uh, Tapu Bulu. So losing Tapu Bulu hurt him. Lo uh, losing Raichu. Uh, he was able to uh, try to bring bring it back with Mega Pinsir, but when I uh, when he used when he did not have a fighting move, it pretty much was good game uh, in the long run because. I don't know. It, it, he needed uh, the fighting type coverage for Mega Pinch Pincer uh, for the rest of most of my team, and even then, I still had Comfy to probably wither it out. So, losing Tapu Bulu was uh, crucial. Losing Raichu was cru. Oh, uh, no, losing Bulu was the main uh, main thing. Overall, he, he did try to bring it back little by little. Yeah, um, this is a this is a tough one, man. Um, I would have to just have to say, what I um, he overall. Okay, when you look at actually, yeah, if you look at the, uh, it's just from the start of the match, it, it's Raichu versus Tyranitar. Um, he had good coverage. Like Raichu versus mm -hmm. Tyranitar, but when it came to the Needle Queen, it was just there wasn't much he can do for that, and I think yeah, Needle Queen just was a problem, especially having like I think the only thing he had there really was the, the Ladias. Ladias would check it, maybe Zin Headbutt Tapu Blue, if I had to guess, but other than that, he really didn't or have wood much. Hammer. Woodhammer, oh yeah, Woodhammer, yeah, in the Grand Centurion. Okay, so probably like those two, but like, I don't know. It was just, I could never, I don't think he could ever find the opening he actually needed this match. Um, just overall, like, I, I felt like he probably wanted a full switch around, but Needle Queen made that pretty difficult for him and stuff. And then Tyranitar getting the sand boost defense. Um, I know he, he at, towards the end, he was pulling it back. I would have liked to see close combat on the Mega Pincer, to tell you the truth. That would have, pro I'm pretty sure I would have taken out the Scotland, if you ask me. Or better yet, frustration Ooh. or return, plus the quick attack would have taken out the Scotland as well. So, I don't know if he was just not carrying one of those. I understand the X Scissor for neutral and probably, I know the Tyranitar. But overall, just looking at your team, I, I believe Return of Frustration plus the um, is Aerialite? Aerialite. Aerialite. Yeah, Aerialite. Aerialite. Um, makes it so much better. Like, looking overall at your team. Yeah, you see, like, okay, Slow King, I guess. X Scissor. That makes sense, but, like, if you look overall, like, X Scissor resists by Star Skarmy. Um, it's super effective on the Tyranitar, but you could just do as well with with close combat. Like, it, it, Mega Charizard resisted to quad four. So, yeah, just overall, like, if you look at a team like this in this scenario, uh, it's good against tank growth. Like, 100. Oh, you have Buzzwool? I didn't know you had Buzzwool. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, like, Return of Frustration would have been so much better. It would have hit his team all around so much better. Sorry about that. There you go. I think I think he probably had a swords dance set, if you ask me. And he was very focused on that towards the late game. Probably did. Which is not it, it's it's it works it works, but I guess in this case scenario it was just it did not work out for him. It I know was it was hard to set up. Yeah. I know it worked against DJ, but I believe you took notes from that game and it's not gonna work every week against the same opponent. But Mega Pinster does have ten kills. At the end of week four, so that's pretty awesome to see. All right, let's move on to spot to number twelve, heading into the top twelve. Bam, we have the Lake Erie Gyarados and their newcomer, uh, Apollo. Apollo fought yours truly, the Blazing Squid. Um, <laughs> I have to admit, Scarf, Rota, and Frost is a good ring. It's always a good ring. It's an obvious ring, and um. Hopefully, 
my video goes up before this, but I, I mentioned that it's like it has to be Scarf, and it was Scarf, and it actually caused me a lot of problems. Um, Thunderous as well. Thunderous was very good mods. Other than that, it had that pretty good coverage with Dark Pulse as well. So, it, and Dark Pulse was almost free. Yeah, I, I was stressing a lot about the Hidden Power Ice, but at the end of the day, it, it, you didn't have it, so. That was actually a big time shocker, but yeah, no, um, he made the right switches when he needed to. Uh, he took advantage that no rocks were on his field. Had rocks been up, maybe it's a different game overall. I think he made some really solid plays overall. Really, actually, really solid. Stated in when he needed to, uh, especially with like the Victini versus a Ferrothorn play. I 100% thought he would switch out, but. That's the game we play. What else went down? Um, uh, that you guys both lead uh, Megas at the first turn. No, I thought that was pretty funny that you guys led with uh, Mega P uh, Pidgeot and Mega Gyarados. Oh yeah, I had a pretty bulky set. I probably should have led off with my Plasma Fist. But oh yeah, the Arcanine, a very defensive Arcanine that. Mm -hmm. That did work. Um, I really thought my Escavalier can somewhat 1v1 it. If it didn't have Morning Sun, guess what? He had Morning Sun. So that made it a bit more challenging for me in the long run. Um, just, yeah, Fairy Throne plus um, an Arcanine, that core made it very, very, very difficult overall for me to break through. Uh, thankfully, I have fixed my Zero Aura issue. So I should have much better team building from here on out because um, I really wanted a fire punch on favorite throw and I just cannot get it to work but I finally figured it out so we should be good for future matches on that end um, yeah but I, I really thought like Haxers might come and stuff like that or Electivire just to like eat up any electric hits from yeah because other than favorite throw and he didn't have anything to take up Plasma Fist. Hmm. Well, that and probably Rotom Frost. But he played it well. I gotta admit, he played it very, very well. Um, he took advantage that I did not bring any ground types. So he was able to Vault Switch freely and stuff like that. So kudos to Apollo. There you guys. You see, he's a Portland Thunderous. Okay, we have to add this for future reference. You have any other comments to give? Uh, not really. It, it he it pretty much uh, shows that Apollo has what it takes to bring the uh, the team that was left behind into a, a good spot in in the upcoming uh, weeks for him. Yeah, for sure. I'm excited to see what he has for us. Future matches. I'm ready for my rematch. But let's jump into spot number eleven and Zionville's Zygarde. That battle just went up for like me yesterday too, actually for week four. Pretty fun match. Okay. Uh, but who did Robert play? He played I gotta Robert. say. He, he, he fought oh. against Shane and the Goodyear Gudras. Wasn't Shane like 2-0? Yeah. Yes. He was 2 uh, I believe he was. So. I gotta say. Robert. I am very proud of you for using Lucario. And making it do something. Oh. Yes. And actually using... Uh, Having the coverage of Bullet Punch in close combat was pretty much an uh, easy way to take out the uh, majority of his team. Uh, props are using Counter Chansey. However, I don't know if it was able to take out, uh, be able to survive from, let's say, High Jump Kick uh, from Megalopony. So, uh, it's, a, it's a good... Uh, idea to have but also at the same time a very risky one because even if you uh, did sur let's say you did survive the roll you wouldn't be able to safely soft boil up as he has like Jirachi I mean Shane had Jirachi uh, it, even a little mola was able to take it out with just using no uh, knockoff if I'm not mistaken so I don't know uh, but other than that, 
I am glad that how, how well you were able to play that game. I, I'm, I'm proud to see Lucario able to do some work with its fighting stab and, and steel stab. And I'm surprised that you actually uh, doubled sword stance in the game uh, in front of a little mola, which could have scalded you, which it surprisingly didn't. But overall, I think you did really well. Yeah, um, dude. I, yeah, I took a few notes on this one. Uh, just, yeah, the counter counter mega low bunny. I wish I had watched this game. I would have been more prepared for my match to know that thing was coming. Um, let me see the. Oh, he made a really awesome play. Um, I gotta give you props to the Amoongus versus Crobat. Expecting him to roost up instead of attacking you. You got that free spore off. You put that thing to sleep. Um, Amoongus was the perfect counter to Alamomola. Um, Banded Talon Flames. Oh my god. Banded Talon Flames. And then the Swords Dancing Lucario. I feel like when you compare Week 1 Robert to Week 3 Robert, it's like these have to be two different Roberts. It really does have to be two different Roberts, in some sense. But no, amazing game. I, I really enjoyed this one. I uh, felt like, to one point, it was just, Robert really did a lot of homework. A lot of homework. Both players did a lot of homework, but at the end of the day, Robert made a lot of crucial plays. Uh, like, lead off um, Talon Flame versus Mega Low Bunny. He's like, I have to keep my Gale Wings intact. Swapped out, you know, making the right switches when he needed to. So, kudos to you, bro. Kudos to you. And with that said, jump on to spot number 10, where we have the Burningham Aerons, who actually gets defeated by the number 9 spot. Really good match to watch, though. I really enjoyed watching this one, too. Uh, let me see. I... What did I have here? Um... The Poisium Z. Um, I love that on that Greninja. Was, that was good tech. It, it was really solid tech. Greninja did a lot of work. Um, Greninja had great coverage. I'll admit that Greninja's coverage was phenomenal. Um, the bulky Salamence came back, which was good to a certain extent. Yeah. You don't see much. We can from also talk about on both ends as well. Yeah, I guess we can. We can jump back and forth uh, because it was just off the bat. Um, you, the leads was Necrozma versus Needle King, if I'm not mistaken, um, giving Burning Hands here the mm -hmm. upper hand. And as he swaps in Greninja, um, DJ makes that read, gets up those rocks for free. And it's looking a lot better for him. And you know, he switches in the top of Finney, I believe, right? Yep, and right started calm mining calm up. Calm mining up while his opponent has the Poison Z, which it's crazy. It's uh, crazy. To... I guess he switched out, uh, and so it, it, it was kind of hard to like bring it in. Yeah, because he went for so Dark Pulse. Calm mind Finney was, uh, yeah. Yeah, but uh, he had to like so. sack Fortress and stuff like that, which is, I guess that prevented his rocks coming uh -huh. off. Yeah. I, 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 I'm trying to think if uh, sacking Fortress was a good play or not. Um, in the long run, because he did have, because he did have a uh, Porygon too, but at the same time, it wasn't going to be tanking uh, uh, a lot of hits in the uh, in the long run. Yeah. So he, I think it, uh, in my opinion, I think it was the best play. So it'll be able to safely bring in Greninja and using the like, Z Gunk shot. Yeah, um, at that point, he was going to have to either take a big hit or a sack him on, regardless. Uh, I think he was in a very awkward position because of 
top of Phoenix typing with just simply Moonblast and Unsurf, that was just more than enough to like put a dent in anyone, anyone, anything in this team. Um, as mentioned, I, I, I put a note here. I, I felt like, unfortunately, there was some hacks that played because uh, Toxic missed on like, I think, I believe the Como, and he also had a Hydro Pump miss. Yeah. But overall, I per, I, I enjoyed Dave, DJ's uh, coverage a lot more than Arthur's coverage this week. Yeah. Um, when it, uh, the bulk, when the Salmon uh, tried to use Roar, uh, and, and Como had Soundproof, it was really a perfect, yeah, it was kind of hard. It, it kind of, I guess it started to th uh, throw Arthur off a bit because it gave Como a chance to start spamming uh, Dragon Dance and able to almost try to sweep with it. Yeah. Um, cause I, I'm surprised that he went for Roar instead of like maybe Defog or something because uh, Defog or Toxic or something because uh, I, I assume that he, he would believe that uh, Como would normally run Soundproof over Boltproof on, in most cases. I, I can understand uh, Bulletproof on some cases, but when you have something like Mega Gardevoir on your team, he was uh, Como will may most likely be running Soundproof or, uh, instead. So yeah, actually, I Maybe didn't even them... I, I didn't know Soundproof can block Roar. So yeah, was... it blocks all sound uh, oh. sound based moves. So then Hyper Roar. Voice wouldn't could... work. Nope. So you would have to run Moonblast. Okay, I see. Okay, that's that's nice. I learned something new. Um, yeah, but like, I, I believe... Oh yeah, I love... It was Dragon Dance, Poison Jab for the Gardevoir, Drain Punch for the Porygon mm -hmm. 2, and and Dragon Claw, if I'm not mistaken, for the Salamance. It was just... Yep, Dragon Claw. Perfect coverage all around. Unfortunately, it's not enough to take out the Needle King, but still, it put in a huge dent. Um... Unfortunately for Arthur, he had to keep recycling Intimidates to try to wear it down or just to keep it balanced. But those first turns rock but, setups just coming in yeah, very Yeah, it, it really hurt him a bit. Yeah. Um, I just, I have to give it to DJ this week, man. Just great. I love the prep. I loved it, my dude. Keep it up. I'm expecting more of that throughout the rest of the season. Hopefully, even from if we battle, do we battle? We probably really do. I would have to check the schedule. Are you ready to move to the top eight? Yep, I'm ready. Let's go for it. All right, ta oh wow, I'm in the A spot. I didn't even know that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we have the Toronto Total Dallas here. Oof, man, it, it's funny because Isaac even criticized me, and he's like, "Why didn't you bring Zydog?" And I was like, "I wanted to leave Zydog at home." And he's like, "Zydog would have legit." won you the game and I was like I, I know but still and that's my fault not bringing Zydog Zydog actually thousand arrows I would have been able to touch the Rotom I would have been able to touch everything basically um, the only thing that would have mm -hmm. stopped it was probably the Ferret one because Arcanine doesn't appreciate it Thunderous is, is fragile it's super effective on the if I'm not mistaken the Rotom Frost because of the electro typing yeah. Um, who else did he have? Did he have Espeon? No. Can't remember the six he had. He had Espeon. Espeon. I would have hit that since I'm faster than that. And Gyarados. Gyarados is bulky, so that would have been a little bit of an issue. But overall, it would have been a really, really good mod. Um, I tried to call the bluffs. Bluffs did not work out for me. And... Probably... What else? Rocks, rocks. There was one questionable move that you did. Uh, is that you went for Hurricane on Ferrothorn. And in my mind, I was like, why didn't you go for Heat Wave? I actually didn't bring it this week. I didn't bring that coverage. Oh. Oh, really? Yeah. I kept it pretty simple. I think I was just... Uh, hurricane, U-Turn, Defog. Protect the mm -hmm. Scout. Yeah, protects the scowl um, for the scarf Rotom. 
to see if he goes for an electric move, then I would have freely switched into my Zero Aura. Yeah, I didn't bring a very offensive set this week. I just wanted to try to get off rocks and hit something with an hurricane. But yeah, same. If I had probably Heat Wave, much, much better. It, it was my own fault for not carrying the coverage that I needed this week. I didn't think it was necessary in the long run. I, I see how necessary it is against Apollo. Um, even the Ice Beam. I actually took off Ice Beam last second from Silvali. And that would have helped me out against the Thunderous. Uh, I really didn't expect Thunderous to come. I was actually I was prepping more for Electivire than Thunderous. Mm -hmm. And because of the motor drive. I thought it was going to be a really good check to, to Zero Aura, but I guess not. But that video will be going up. Hopefully it goes up before this match. So you guys can check out my side and my thoughts throughout the match. But with that said, let's okay. move on to spot number seven. Salt Lake City Swamperts and their coach, Brennan. Brennan, great job. Sash Nihilego to lead. Get off those free rocks. Get off a free attack. Uh, it was just really smart. Really, really smart. Um, wow. Wow. What did... I, th I think Jordan brought it down to Sash. No. Wait, how did that turn go down? I think Jordan swapped out. Uh, Jordan... Jordan swapped down to... Uh, to Garchomp and went for Outrage. Yes, Outrage, and... which was a questionable play, but that's fine. Yeah, so he went for the, the uh, Outrage and Brennan found out it was Scarf. So it was like... You're locked into Outrage and your Scarf, meaning I can switch into a free Fairy type. So, great analysis by Brennan, just right off the bat. And he got Rock Jumper for free. What else went down? Um, where are my notes? I, I Like I mentioned earlier, I think that Prima Arena was Specs. Yeah, it was. Because based off on that, how much that damage it did on the, on the Zapdos, was way too much than, uh, than I uh, expected. Yes, it was. I, he told me afterwards. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no. Specs. Um, we mentioned the Thick Fat Mama. Snorlax. Amazing. Can we talk about the Tangela, though? Yes. Oh, my God. <laughs> that Tangela 1v1, that girder. And lived a double edge from Omega Glalie. I don't know how it lived, but it lived. And mm, when it went, it does have some great went. physical defense stats. It does, it does, especially with that Evolite. Oof. I think it might be thicker than Mama. But yeah, no, the, the bulky Leech Sea Tangela, and then being faster than Girder, getting off those easy, easy. Um, Giga Drains. Oh, that's another comment I had for, for Jordan here, actually. Uh, going for that double bulk up, man, was actually... I don't know why. I, I understand that. I think just one bulk up was, was fine. Yeah, one bulk up, because as you can see there, he goes for two, and then he's kind of forced. He's in the position to tangle this faster than me, and I have to... I have to go for the mock Punch. Maybe one Bulga plus Drain Punches would have kept you alive a little bit longer. But I guess he wasn't looking at the, uh, the speed calcs. I don't even know what the speed tiers are for those two mods. Are they? Uh, I believe Girder is slower. Let me see. Tangela is base 60. Oh my god. No, yeah, you're right. So two and we're talking about 40 versus 60. Girder's 40. Tangela 60, so 100% the better play was probably just one knockoff. I mean, one bulk up. So, but Brennan, regardless, you did a phenomenal job, man. Keep it up. Because last week you lost, but this week you bounce up and, and putting in a lot of work. So, I'm really excited to see that. And where are you going to move up for week four? And that said, let's jump up to the Russellville Rockets and their coach, Steven, we are, it's his shortest match of the life. Um, the Kastab, was it Kastab Barry? Don fan? Yep, Kastab Barry. There you go. Kastab Kastab Kastab. Fan. That was phenomenal. 
I, I don't know if he calculated. Oh, well, he did mention that he felt that he might go for Final Gambit. I don't know how he made that read right off from turn one. But then <laughs> the Crocodile coming in and eating its berry and just the superpower knocking it out. I was actually pretty shocked that a negative one Gunk Shot was still doing over half to Clefable too. That was actually a shocker I for me. I surprised myself. I was like, oh wow. So And Steven didn't miss one, so Psst, good job to you, man. But yeah, I think he had Rain Dance, Scope Lens, Inner no, Focus it was, Energy. Uh, Isn't that Scope uh, Lens? I don't. You sure, man? Wait, let me see. I think it's Scope Lens or Razor Fang, one of the two. I believe it was Scope Lens. Oh, I says, what did I say? Scope? I said Scope something. I, it's Scope Lens, yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know what I said. Forget it. Forget what I said. <laughs> okay. But yeah, the focus energy okay. <laughs> plus that, uh, plus Swift Swim. That was... It was Swift Swim. Yeah, it had to be Swift Swim. What else? Because if he would have had a Sniper... It was. If it would have been Sniper, then Venusaur would have never lived. I can tell you that much. But yeah... That is true. Um, but yeah, no, I think he had... Um, the two coverage, just having... It was Scald, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. Was it Scald or was it Surf? No. Scald. Scald. Whatever, Scald in the rain, um, boosted by the by the critical hits. Um, Draco Meteor, he's landing every single Draco Meteor. I thought that was great coverage. He probably even had, um, because it just gets Flash Cannon. So Flash Cannon for the Clefable would have been mm -hmm. super nice as well. Being one of the few checks that um, Matt even had for it. Um, Scizor didn't have to make a big appearance. I don't think anybody did really. It was Don Fan's show. That was about it. <laughs> it was Don Fan's show to shine. <laughs> you have anything else to, to add? Not really. Yeah. Not I'm really. Sure. It was very. It was short, short and quick, uh, straight to the point of the match. Exactly. And I think it went into his into his favor. All right, let's jump on to spot number five. And the Outback Kamalas moving their way up. Oof. Jesse had, he had a good game. I will admit that. Good game. Um, I do feel though, Jesse could have had better prep, in my opinion, in the long run. Um, watching the game, uh, Winsicott technically always does the same thing. And from the get-go, it goes for the U-turn, so Rocky Helmet user would have been nice for you to have. And Tony had one, and it worked out really well for him. It really did. If you if you need info, go check out that game where that Halucha fought the Skarmory. Take notes. Um, <laughs> uh, he, I think, did I take any notes? I don't think I need to take any notes for this game. No, I didn't. So I did. Um... Uh, for the Azumarill, I, I was kind of questionable with the, the fact that it had leftovers. Uh, uh, but it wasn't like a, a support a leftover set, so... I don't know. Uh, and in fact, it didn't do, do as much as I thought. It kind of... It was just there. Uh, but... It was kind of hard for Jesse to get through the game because of how Jack played uh how well he played with uh his whimsicott so it was kind of hard to keep uh the momentum up uh but i was surprised at how well he was able to bring it back with sucker punch celebi yes sucker yes. punch celebi can you believe that yeah that's... for the miss magus that was actually probably the only tech i liked from him this week, did I? Yeah. Um, I felt like, man, I, I was expecting, truth be told, I was probably expecting the the Sap Sipper Azumarill to come back this week. For just the Whimsicott or That's something. That's what I thought. Yeah, just something something for that Whimsicott. Um, he could even put the Rocky Helmet on it, to tell you the truth. Rocky Helmet, brick break to break screens. I felt like... Um, 
Jesse could have just prepped overall better for this. And uh, in game decisions, it, it's getting there. He had it late game, but like early to mid game, he, he, he wasn't getting it. Um, whenever he wanted to G dance up, he got taunted. Could have easily gone for the fire punch, stuff like that. But I, I know Jesse's going to get there. Um, Jack is good, bro, but you're better. Trust me. And I know you can get yourself up there to top four. But other than that, no. Celebi, I gotta admit, great coverage. It was Recover, Sucker Punch, Leaf Storm, and Earth Power. He actually got a little bit lucky, but we'll talk about that when we get to Jack. Spot number four, the Goodyear Gudras. Um, we're not gonna punish Shane too much. Um, Cause I, I enjoyed safety goggles, Jirashi. I thought that was clever. Yeah, that was a good, that was a good bring, for uh, to counteract the Amugus. Yeah, that was a phenomenal bring. Um, he had the coverage. It was just man, his opponent was making really really good calls overall. Um, he had really he had. Uh, Shane did have a uh, good momentum early in the game, but after losing uh, Lopany through counter chance, he kind of threw him off a bit. Yeah. Uh, to be honest, I, I was surprised he went for a return over high jump kick, because he, he, sure he may have like a resistance or two, but it was free. It was literally free. Yeah, I, I so, guess people were just scared to protect. Maybe protects Chansey. I don't know. That can always be a thing. Um, but yeah, no. Either protect or bring back of Amoongus, but still. True. Probably high jump kick into return on Amoongus, it'll just probably most likely take it out. So, I don't know. He, he, like I said, he had great momentum early in the game, but after losing Lop, uh, Megalopony, it kind of uh, slowed down his pace a bit. Yeah, it actually kind of helped um, Lucario get into it, actually. Once that thing was gone, it's like, all right, I start putting in work. Um, other than that, it, it was a good game. It truly was. Um, trust me, I know what you got to go through. I battled Robert week four. The Chansey plus the Amoongus is a very nasty core to go up against. Um, I hope I never had to battle this core again. Um, but yeah, no, I, I can see Shane bouncing back easy this next week. He's going to learn from this and he's going to move forward. Spot number three. We were not talking about it that long ago. The Swansea Swanas and their coach, Jack. Hit us off with this one, Spartan275. Okay, so like I mentioned before, Jack had uh, a great set with uh, Whimsicott. Having Tailwind along with what I assume to be, uh, if I remember, Banded Tyrantrum with Head Smash was just cleaning house. It, 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 if he kept the uh, at least the tailwind, no. I, I think uh, the one thing that really threw him uh, started to slow him down is when he burnt the Z moves, like immediately uh, when Jesse switched out his Mega Charizard Y for Celebi, and it didn't do anything. So. And I'm also surprised that uh, near the end of the game, when uh, Jesse was coming back, they didn't have Ice Beam coverage. He went straight for Surf, and I was like, why did he go for Surf? He could have went for Ice Beam, or at least try to uh, set up a bit um, while bluffing maybe the, the Sucker Punch. So, I don't know. There were a lot of mind games. Uh... Jack was uh, on Jesse's toes. The the predictions with I think by far his best mon in, in, uh, on his team was Whimsicott with that coverage with U-turn, taunt, and tailwind. It was just it was it kept him uh, at a great momentum uh, of speed until near the end. Yeah, that was a great support mon. I've never seen a Whimsicott stay so many times in against a Charizard. 
and lived so long. <laughs> but yeah, I think he had yeah. one head smash that was super unfortunate. I forgot who it was on, but it had hit landed. I think we'd be talking about a different game. I'm pretty sure Jack would have won, but that one head smash miss was crucial because actually he lost a turn of Tailwind. Because he was able to kill the Mon the next turn, but he would have killed it the previous turn had it just connected. But that's the game we play. And same thing at the end. It was just he went for the taunts, knowing it was he was playing so well, man. You know what it is to like play so well throughout the whole game and then to have one move ruin that for you? It's just like, wow. I know the feeling. I know the feeling oh so well. Yeah, I think most of us have been there. Um, but yeah, I, actually, another thing. I was truly expecting at least to see Signal Beam. Because Manaphy does get Signal Beam. And that would have been a huge counter uh, for for the Celebi. So, yeah, that too. Yeah. I, I was surprised he didn't go for that or had that either. Yeah, so that's just... I uh, think, so I think for Signal Beam would have been like a good bring. Exactly. That would have been a nice little coverage, especially for that little... Um, for the Celebi. Especially since his only grass move was like Lee Storm. So if he was able to get it, which actually he was at mo at times like able to get, he whimsical in against the thing and stuff like that. Um, but no, yeah, I think I really like, um, I really like Jack's team. I really do. I really enjoy it. Uh, the whimsical with Tailwinds, the the double screens, Celis, um, Cresselia makes his team very, very, very challenging to beat. Not impossible. If you study guys enough, you can't make it through. But even if you study and like Jesse's case, he can out still out read you. And that's gonna be a problem. But with that said, oh spot number two we have Isaac. Um Did I watch the match? No, I didn't even watch the Paula match. No, like we mentioned before that uh it was a remake and unfortunately we weren't we weren't able to load up the video to to review it so yeah and i thought i watched the, the week one match but i didn't watch that one either but we'll just jump on to spot number one the victorville victinis and can we say welcome back to spandish scotland <laughs> in the <laughs> sand stream <laughs> welcome back that thing is a monster i was really glad to watch it come back i love that dude but yeah you I love mentioned that dog. <sighs> Don't worry, I love my dog too. I love Zydog. <laughs> but the one thing, uh, actually, here's the thing. Near, uh, before I uh, brought this uh, the team up uh, to get built, it was a more of a last second thing. I initially was gonna have uh, a bulky Needle Queen uh, with Black Sludge uh, as the item, but someone told me, uh, specifically Alejandro, he, he's been he tends to help me out. Uh, with my t uh, team building sometimes and he suggested that I could go for Scarf uh, Needle Queen and so I did some calcs, I did some punches and I made it a set to where I was able to not only outspeed Tapu Bulu by one point but the fact that I was able to beat it uh Beat it, uh, especially when the uh, aggressive terrain was down, was very crucial. So I, I think that uh, having Needle Queen as a oh, as a scarf was actually a great bring for me. So I had to say thank you, Alondra, for that advice. Uh, but other than that, I, I try to keep stand up. I ensured that. Uh, Pretty much, uh, Zoking was a uh, was alive, so you could able to take care of uh, Salazzle just in case if, if it gets out of hand. Uh, let's see what else was. Uh, my only I think question... the only mod that didn't really do much was uh, Comfy. Comfy was was there just in case for the for the Mega Pincer, but other than that, I think all my mods at least got a kill from it. Of that game. Yeah, my only question was. Especially, uh. Did you have yeah, Sludge Wave on Needle Queen? Yes, I did. 
Why didn't you click it, dude? It was such a but... neutral play. Uh, Ice Beam was more free, to be honest. D yeah, Ice Ice Beam or Sludge Wave. was more f or Sludge because wave. or Sludge Wave. I'm, I'm just I was I was curious I, because, because it was you went for free. like that Earth Power, and I was like, what? He brought in the Latios. That was super unfortunate. Yeah, but yeah, but other than that, yeah, and I was surprised how. Actually, there was another thing about uh, Jordan's team is that he had double stab, uh, double fighting stab with drain punch and high jump kick. That that kind of threw me off uh, when uh, Skarmory was one v oneing it. Yeah. So I wasn't actually ex expecting both both those stab moves. So yeah, neither was if he that. didn't, uh, I, I think uh, Skarmory would have uh, lived in, and pro I would have probably had a oh, maybe a five zero. But other than that. Uh, I don't know. I I had to say that Scarf Neo Queen was a good brain. No, no, yeah, it was. Um, could I have to? Nah, I really couldn't tell it was Scarf until. Yeah, 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 because naturally it's faster than Tapu Bulu, so it was hard. Except that you would go for one attack and swap out, but regardless, it, it's hard to tell it's Scarf, especially with, uh, you know, Ladios comes in, Ladias came in, so technically you would expect it to come out. And get swapped out. So it was a really, really good bring. It adds by like Halucha. It adds by I think everything on this team. Barring no Scarfers. Mm -hmm. Or Unburdened Boost. Which actually, I don't think he got the Unburdened Boost off. So yeah. You were Needle Queen. And it did put in a lot of work. It really did. So congrats on you and your, your, your advice helpers. Because you guys are doing a good job. And that's why we have the Victorville Victinis. In the number one spot, I think you've been part of the number one spot for the last two weeks now. If I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Maybe. Even, maybe uh, I need to say it at this moment. Yeah, <laughs> because we know week four is coming, and actually we have all the games up, so this should be coming pretty soon. Hopefully, hopefully before I even leave town, because I'm not gonna be here this weekend. But with that said, players and trainers, I hope you guys enjoyed this third episode of the Power Rankings LDO Majors Season Eight. But with that said, I'm signing off. You guys are amazing. Stay blazing. Squid wait, out. hold on. Wait. Oh, oh battle of the week. Wait, wait, hold on. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say. Wait, wait hold on, hold on. Uh, yeah, I'm well, don't forget about battle of the week, man. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so battle of the week is gonna go to, bam, DJ man. Congratulations, my dude. I think you hard earned that win. It really was hard on one. Um, you you gave Lazy Ghost a run for his money. Um, you guys haven't checked out the video, there is the battle code. So I highly suggest you go check it out. TJ, go meet up with Prez and get your prize. Well, with that said, can you sign us off, Spartan275? I hope you guys have a great day. Until next time, we'll catch you guys later. Peace.